Uh, good afternoon to all of you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sapna Bora, for inviting me and sharing the experiences on sustainable campus initiatives in higher learning institutes to the participant of this program. What we are going to talk in this sustainability in the university or the institute campus. But before that, let's talk. The sustainability is not a very new concept. Gandhiji in 1931 discussed about this sustainability in the context of the European. And that time he talks about the European themselves will have to remodel their outlook if they are not to perish under the weight of the comforts to which they are becoming slaves. Here the target comfort is basically talks about the energy requirement for the individuals and also the industrialization which was happening in the England during that period of time. In the latest Nature editorial in 2019, again they have re-emphasized what Gandhiji was talking about and quote, as the world continues to grapple with how to respond to climate change, biodiversity loss, persistent poverty, and poor health and nutrition, Gandhiji's commitment to what we now call sustainability is perhaps more relevant today than in his own times. So he actually look upon that sustainability, maybe that word was not used in his time, but now what we are talking about the sustainability, sustainable development, sustainable technology, every technology, whatever we call sustainable living, sustainable food habits, these all actually are not very new concepts. If we talk about the Rabindranath's philosophy on environment, which was very closely related with sustainable rural development and correlate between the nature and the human being. He felt that air, water, soil pollution hindered the people, whether they are rich or poor, but the poor will be mostly affected because of the speedy urbanization and the deforestation. And today, again, we are when we are looking at the effect of the climate change. Again, we are discussing the poor will be mostly affected due to the climate change effect. He, during that period, 1920, introduced the nature study in his school at Santriketan. He also started the program like tea planting ceremony, which is a bricks are open, integrated with the ceremony of Barsamangal, welcoming the rainy seasons, are examples to live with the nature. And today, again, we do the tree planting ceremony. So this concept of sustainability, living with the nature, looking the development in a more uh, equitable nature. These are all very old concepts. But today, again, when we are facing very serious problem of the climate change, we are so serious. In this talk, I will basically talk about sustainable development. What is the India's commitments to the climate change? What is sustainable campus initiatives throughout the world and in India? and how Tejpur University is looking at the sustainable campus initiatives in its campus. But before going into the discussion about sustainable development, let's first ask a few questions. Can forest be cleared endlessly for cultivation and the habitation? The way we are looking, the deforestation, we are cutting the trees. If we look the forest area, particularly for the Northeast, it is coming down. Can agriculture land be used for building cities and factories, which is a very serious debate in every state. Now the agriculture land where the industries come up and there is an issue. Can intensive farming be carried out throughout the year where water input is an important issue? Do we have that much of uh, clean water for using in the farming? Can fossil fuel be pumped out in a never-ending manner? Because fossil fuels, coal, oil, and gas, these are the primary energy resources for electricity generation, or whatever we want to do, kind of work, whether it's the thermal or the electrical. Still, we are using the fossil fuels. 
and the kind of carbon dioxide emission due to the coal based thermal power plant can we do it how long can our natural resources last at the increasing rate of exploitation and the consumption if we we'll talk about the industrial revolution which started just 100 120 years back and within this 120 years we have almost consumed all the fossil fuels so the earth it takes millions of years to produce this fossil fuel but we can consume within 100 150 years about total consumption of the fossil fuels and the answer to all these kind of questions will explain what is the concept of sustainable development sustainable development that concept the sustainable actually first came in 1972 in its classic report called limits to growth which was written by a group of scientists of mit and they talk about that we are searching for a model output that represents a world system that is sustainable without sudden and uncontrolled collapse this is the most important words here and capable of satisfying the basic material requirement of all of its people today when we are looking at the climate change there is a frequency disturbance of the rainfall there is a cyclone of the storm frequency has increased the drought frequency has increased and those are the sudden and uncontrolled we can't we can't do anything if there is a storm comes most widely used definition of the sustainable development given in the brutland report in 1987 and that report called our common future the brutland was a norwegian prime minister and she first gives this definition and this is now widely used sustainable development is a development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generation to meet their own needs now that needs is a very subjective term it's a very qualitative how to do the quantification of that needs so in that report it also mentioned the concept of needs in particular the essential needs of the world poor to which overriding priority should be given and when we talk about the limitation because how much environment degradation can be allowed then idea of the limitation actually comes from the state of technology social organization and the environment stability to make the present and the future needs so both these terms are actually not very quantitative you can't quantify these terms rather we need a proper understanding how much energy can we use and how much uh, degradation of the environment can be allowed if we look the sustainable development is not exactly on environment it actually encompasses three parameters or three dimensions this environment economy and society now if we look this circle of the three environment society and economy and they are superimposed on each other and there is a very small portion the white portion which we call a sustainable development because it must integrate the environment it must the societal requirement and also it also looks up to the economy because which actually propels the society now if we look the kyoto protocol which is very recent one in 1997 which first talked about the quantitative uh, numbers how to uh, meet with this climate change related issues the kyoto protocol implemented the objective of the unfcc to reduce the onset of global warming by reducing the greenhouse concentration to a level that would prevent the dangerous anthropogenic interference with the climate system and there it talks about that every country has a responsibility to reduce its carbon dioxide emission whatever in 1997 at a certain percentage by 2012 on an average it was a 5% reduction of the carbon dioxide emission but there are big countries like us that didn't agree with the kyoto protocol and then the problem starts if the big country doesn't reduce the carbon dioxide emission the smaller countries where share is very very low doesn't have much effect on the world climate 
in 2015 the sustainable development goals comes which is again up to 2030 within this 15 years period there are 17 indicators where affordable and clean energy is one of the important parameter where we are trying to provide the clean energy which is accessible to all the peoples of the world but again at 2030 if we look there will be much more people will be left out towards the access of the clean energy along with the, all the other parameters. The latest one, the Paris Agreement, where we again talk about the carbon dioxide emission, but before that, let's look the different countries, how much carbon dioxide emission actually happening. This is 2019 data. And if you look the China, United States, India, they are the major player in the gross carbon dioxide emission. In this pie chart, there are 20 countries, names are there. And these 20 countries actually emits 80% of the total carbon dioxide emission of the world. And the rest of the world actually emits only 20%. 196 countries, so only 20 countries actually emits 80% of the total carbon dioxide emission. And rest 176 countries emits only 20% of the total emission. If we look the numbers, the China, in 2018, gross CO2 emission in terms of gigatons was 10.06, United States 5.41, India 2.65, Russian Federation 1.71, and Japan 1.16. These are the top five countries which emit the maximum amount of the carbon dioxide emission to the environment. If we look in terms of percentage, the China, it is 2020 data, China is 28%. United States 15 and India is 7%. These six countries actually emit 60% of the total emission of the world and rest of the world is 40%. So the responsibility mainly lies with these six countries, how to reduce the carbon dioxide emission, uh, whatever is happening at today's level. In this context, this Paris Agreement actually talks about because Kyoto Protocol, it didn't work out very nicely for most of the countries, the big countries. So in the Paris Agreement, they again started that there is a target that we need to uh, tackle this temperature rise to below 2 degrees centigrade above pre-industrial levels, that is 1900 data, and to limit the increase to 1.5 degrees centigrade since the, this would substantially reduce the risk and the effects of the climate change. Now, if you look, this is in 2016. Under the Paris Agreement, each country must determine, plan, and regularly report on the contribution that it undertakes to mitigate the global warming. In the agreement itself, it doesn't specify a target or target date, but this actually allows the country to determine their own target, and which is called nationally determined contribution or NDC. So each country will come up with their own target and target date to reduce the CO2 emission at a certain percentage of that. And the projection is in the pre-industrial average is 0 degree centigrade. So global mean temperature increase in 2000, 2100, the target was 1.5 degree centigrade as per the Paris Agreement. If you look the number in 2018, already we crossed 1 degree. And if you look at the recent data, this is now 1.09 degree centigrade rise in the temperature. So in, in any way, the Paris Agreement target uh, 1.5 degrees centigrade will not be fulfilled rather than temperature increase will be much, much higher. In this context, if we look at India's nationally determined contribution or India's commitment at Paris, that we will try to reduce the emission intensity by 33 to 35 percent by 2030, best at 2005 level. How we will do? Now we will have more and more renewable energy resources, and our target is 40 percent of electricity from non fossil fuel based energy sources by 2030 with the support of technology transfer and climate financing. We will also look for an additional carbon sink of 2.5 to 3 billion tons of CO2 equivalent through increasing the forest and tree cover by 2030, where still our progress is not very good. If we look our 
power plant or total install capacity in the as on June 2021. Still, we are more rely on the coal based thermal power plant, which is 53%, and total power which comes from the fossil fuel based like coal, lignite, gas, and diesel is roughly 61%. Hydro share is not very large, it's only 12%. Nuclear is stagnant for last quite long years. It is only 1.8%. And the renewables is increasing now, it is 25% of the total installed capacity in India. And our target is 40% by 2030. Within the renewable, if we look, the wind and the solar are the two major players. The wind actually installed capacity 39,518, nine megawatt and solar ground mounted rooftop and off grid is roughly 44,000 megawatt. And the total is 98,883 megawatt as of June 2021. So our option is very, very limited. If you want to reduce this emission intensity because hydropower we can't have more and more because they're environmental activists and there are issues in every locality. Nuclear power plant, we cannot have much more because we don't know what is going to happen if there is a disaster happens in the nuclear power plant. And after the Fushigama incident in Japan, people are really very much worried about the progress of the nuclear power plant. So the option is only renewables and how much we can do, there is also limit because if we look for the solar, we don't have much uh, free land where the solar power plant can be installed. So the situation is not very good. We have a very tight situation. Otherwise, we have to look like this. This is a sky, basically Beijing sky. This is a relatively old data. So Beijing sky used to look like this. If we look at the climate change indicators, what will happen if the temperature actually rises? So basically, it will increase the sea level. It will increase the water vapor because as temperature rises, water vapor will be more and more in the atmosphere. The temperature of the earth and the ocean, that is the both air and ocean will increase. Ocean acidity will also increase. What will be decreasing trend? The snow cover, like Himalayan glacier, the Arctic sea ice, those will also be start melting. That means our total ice, whatever happening in the Arctic areas that will also come down and the sea level will increase. What will be the effect for a common people? The first figure is for Delhi, the winter, where the sky is completely uh, covered. And this is a figure in Bombay, which is very frequently happening in Bombay. The rainfall is so high. And this rainfall is actually not on pattern. It is a frequency is changing and the volume of the rain is also increasing. What is the other effect for India? The frequency of the cyclonic storm has increases. If you look 2018, 19, 20, and 21, the severe cyclonic storms are coming at a very regular fashion in both Bayon, Bengal, and the Arabian Sea. So we are already facing the effects of the climate change. Though it was earlier discussed that climate change may not have that much of effect. There are lobbies like you were earlier US president that one degree centigrade temperature rise is not a very big number. But if you look the effect, this is already happening. So what to do with this? Recently, the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, has come up with the assessment report, which is called AR6. It's unequivocal that human influence has warmed the atmosphere. There is no question on that, that we have done it. Widespread and repeat changes in the atmosphere, ocean, cryosphere, and the biosphere have occurred. The global surface temperature will continue to increase until at least the mid century under all different scenarios. And global warming of 1.5 degree centigrade and 2 degree centigrade will be exceeded during the 21st century. If you look the Paris Agreement target that 1.5 degrees centigrade, we are expecting at 2100. Now in this uh, IPCC report, actually clearly 
uh, stated that 1.5 degree centigrade maybe will have within 10 years, within 2040. The scale of recent changes across the climate system as a whole and the present state of many aspects of the climate system are unprecedented over many centuries to many thousands of years. And this all happening, if we look from 2000 to 2021, in these 20 years, the scenarios has completely changed. There were extreme heat waves, precipitation, droughts, and tropical cyclones. If we look at the different scenario analysis which is given in the IPCC report, the uh, and at the three time uh, time zone 2021 to 2040, 2041 to 2060, and 2081 to 2100, the best estimate if you look is 1.5 degrees centigrade within 2040. But Paris Agreement actually talks about 1.5 degree at the end of this century. 2100, if you look, the extreme temperature which may rise is 5.7 degree. And if there is a 5.7 degree rise in temperature, then maybe lots of countries will be disappear because sea level rise will be more than 10 meters. And this is a very serious concern for the coming for the world community so with this background now when we are talking about the sustainable campus initiative because we need to change our perspectives this coal based thermal power plant which emits the carbon dioxide or renewable based power plant if we don't want to change our perspective then our future is very very gloomy now, what is Sustainable Campus Initiative? Now, Sustainable Campus Initiative actually talks about first, why it is required, because we have a finite natural resources. There is no question on that, that energy resources are finite. Water, basically the potable water is very uh, low or it's very finite. Though we have seawater, large amount, but if you look, the potable water is very, very small. Global climate change, we are already looking all these effects, the weather extremes, intense storms, irregular rains, glacial meltings, global warming nearing a tipping point. Our human population is increasing and it's consuming more and more resources and energy as the economics is developing. Increased consumption per capita. If you look the US at the 5% world population, but actually uses 25% of the world resources and, and energy. And China and India is also on the same path where we are more and more consumption of natural resources is happening. High dependence on fossil fuels. If we look at India's power scenario, 61% is electricity is coming from the fossil fuel based energy resources, which is not sustainable over the period of time. Within this concept, why we are talking about a sustainable campus? Because sustainable campus is basically an university or an institute campus in a microbiome of the larger society and can be the laboratories for the changes. If we can educate the students to be socially responsible and environmentally responsible, then they will be the future citizens of a country and they will look the sustainability in a far better uh, way. Not only do universities have the capacity to seek solution to today's global challenge, it also share a responsibility to seek out seemingly unanswerable questions. The objective of a sustainable campus is to reduce the ecological footprint beyond the benchmark and to do so with an institutional practice that respects and acts to protect the natural resource system. Here, institution is coming into play where institutional plan, practice, or actions will be towards the sustainability. Higher education institutions are increasingly and consistently integrating sustainability into campus infrastructure and operations so that it may be considered normal or at the later stage, the way we do things. That means we do whatever more efficient, more sustainable within the university campus. And that will be a culture and that will be a good thing for our future students. 
what can be done we need to be, be proactive what proactive means we have to reduce the consumption we have to reuse the materials and we have to recycle so this is the first uh, point consumption has to come down we have to reuse whatever the material we are throwing as a waste and how we can recycle those materials very simple way to look into that turn off the lights in areas which is not in use that means you are reducing the consumption why can you use public transportation bicycle carpool make sustainability a core concept in your operation or part of everyone's job because this is a, a kind of a campaign which starts from individual why there is no definite answer on how to make a campus green or sustainable because this concept is itself is very new and most of the universities or the institutes are on the early phase of the sustainability movement characteristics of the each campuses are different such as the campus location and the site university bear profound knowledge for increasing the awareness knowledge technology and tools to create an environmentally sustainable future so if you start doing something within the campus that will have an effect on the society how it can be done the first the institute or the university must have a commitment to the sustainability without that commitment you can't go forward we will have a sustainability committee will make a policy will prepare the action plan implement the action plan in review and the modify the action plan and then only you will have the sustainability uh policy document for that particular university this may not be the same for all the university every institution has a different outlook different geographical uh conditions and then we will try to look who will formulate the policy the committee may be divided into several sub committee or working groups to formulate the sustainable campus policy and this committee must include scientists engineers social scientists junior level operators what are the areas it will basically look the energy and the utilities waste and recycling natural ecosystems built environment transportation and the communication communication that means how do you are communicating with your ideas with the larger number of people within the campus we first have a required sustainability statement from the institute it's a public declaration of the commitment to the sustainability and that to do so with an institutional practice that respect and acts to protect the natural resources it basically shows the institute determinations towards sustainability it will define institution own campus sustainability definition and this statement must be very specific measurable and have short medium and long term action plans i have shown as sustainability principle statement or have harvard university it actually basically very uh, bullet point wise specific it must be measurable because if you give a statement and today and tomorrow we will have an action plan how we can formulate the action plan based on the statement because every action plan has to be measured how to prepare an action plan take inventory of the campus let's look only the lighting of the campus what are the different types of illumination systems are used within the campus you try to analyze those data that means we try to take what are the different types of lamps whether it is incandescent lamps cfl lamp led lamps uh, metal halide lamps what are the different types of cfl or led or the fluorescent lamps are used then you try to identify what are the problem areas we have found that the most of the cases still cfl lamps are there but the presently led lamps are available in the market which are much more efficient set target and goals that we are trying to look 50% replacement of the present lighting system with led lamps identify possible solution that's the led lamps 
you create modify the action plans as you go on this action plan may be need to refine or your target has to be higher and higher simple way to look the climate plan of a campus identify the action plan to make the campus carbon neutral carbon neutral means whatever the energy resources we are using these are not based on fossil fuel or if you are using fossil fuel energy resources the similar amount of the energy we are also generating from non fossil fuel energy sources include the target date for carbon neutrality and this target date is very very important that 2030 will try to replace all our electricity generation from the fossil fuel based to renewable interim goals and action to be taken in a phased manner to reach that target date mechanism to track the progress of the action and the goals always we need to whatever the target we are looking how to track the progress of those actions and the goals because it has to be measurable numbers 20% we have achieved 30% achieved 40% achieved it must include the tangible action very simple way the purchase on the started electrical appliances now if i have a this statement so tomorrow the institution is not going to purchase any air conditioner unit or fans or the lights which are not five star rated why we are looking for that because if we have a five star rating appliances the energy consumption is automatically comes down purchase or produce of the 50% reduction electricity consumption from renewable energy sources within a one year some of the places what they are doing if they don't have the place to install this renewable energy systems they are basically purchasing from some other places and that they are accounting on their rate comprehensive pre inventory and assessment use on native plants for landscaping these are very simple but these are all tangible action which i can able to measure what is happening after one year two year or three years so the progress can be measured in terms of percentage now these are the few campuses which i am showing you and how they are looking the sustainability in their campus this is in singapore nanang technical technological university it is one of the higher ranking university it initiated a aims to develop a novel campus wide sustainability framework with demonstration sites 30% reduction in energy water and waste intensity by 2020 this was in 2011 baseline and they have done it making it one of the world's most eco friendly campuses in the world now that 30% reduction in energy water or waste that is your target how within which is the target date 2020 what was the baseline data 2011 so within this 10 years they are going to reduce this 30% reduction so you can measure that how much you have done it and this initiative has transformed the campus into a test bed for research project in cutting edge green technology if we look the cambridge university they have a cambridge green challenges they have identified these few parameters so that they are trying to look how they can do in case of the carbon that means it's a energy carbon based fuel their carbon reduction strategy through renewable energy systems recycling and waste reduce reuse and recycle simple if we look the plastic so if we can reduce the use of the plastic then if we try to reuse those plastics for recycling water reducing the water shortage this is a big challenge in lots of universities how to meet the water demand sustainable food biodiversity and ecosystems built environment and transportation in the cambridge there are lots of places you will find cycles which is commonly used for movement from one campus to another campus this is in stanford they call it a sustainable stanford if we are to leave our chin in a better world we must take the steps now to create a sustainable environment so it is critical that we model the sustainable citizenship on our own campus 
and they have looked the energy, water, buildings, transportation, waste, food, and living. These are the areas where they are trying to be sustainable. If you look the MIT, they have started the sustainability in their campus from U plus campus. You as an individual, you look the campus. The campus is actually looks the city, and the city is looks the globe. We are focused on making changes on the MIT campus, but we think change starts with you. We can work together to learn and generate new and big ideas. And that you become, or that university or the institute is also located in a city. So the ideas, whatever generating within the campus that can be replicated within the city and that city actually, again, try to replicate those ideas in the globe. If you look in Indian scenario, at least in the NAC accreditation, now they have included an environmental sustainability criteria for rating the educational institution. And that environmental sustainability criteria has a number of points like use of solar energy, use of energy efficient lamps, whether energy efficiency, LED lamps, whether we are feeding power to the grid back, that again is solar energy part, whether we have a solid waste, liquid waste, chemical waste management policies. So NAC slowly started that uh, environmental sustainability is an important parameter to look the different universities. IIT Council, they have started called Green Agenda for all the IITs and for the, all the IITs, they have come up with their Green Agenda some of the IITs have already set up the new center or new offices. Like IIT Guwahati, they have started call a green office. IIT Delhi, they call it a sustainable IIT Delhi. EICT also started call a green and smart campus awards for the engineering colleges. Director of Technical Education Madhya Pradesh, they have also started green campus initiatives for their engineering colleges within the states. So slowly, we are also looking this sustainability or the green agenda within our institutional framework. Center for Science and Environment is a popular for Down to Earth magazine, which published. They launched a green campus initiative in 2017. And Center for Science and Environment believes that education and institutions serve as an important incubators for developing a green sense among students and teachers, and they create a new generation of professionals to drive their future changes. They prepare a toolkit called Green Sense Educational Campus Inventory that helps the campus to understand and document the ways in which they consume the resources and generate waste. In 2020, they have come up with a compendium where they have uh, identify five institutes or colleges like Ramakrishna Mission Vivekananda Centennial College, Guru Nanak Dev University, in Assam, Assam Don Bosco University. And these institutes, what they have done on the Green Campus University, those are all documented. With this background, now let's look how the school university is looking, the sustainable campus initiatives with an objective and the missions. Our mission is the Tejpur University aims to be a sustainable campus that contributes positive environmental social benefits and engage in sustainability related activities. What are our mission? We want to generate 40% of the total electricity consumption in the university from renewable energy based systems by 2030. This 40% is actually taken from the Paris Agreement. India's commitment is 40% electricity from non-fossil fuel based energy sources and from there we are also looking that 40 percent of our electricity should come from renewable energy based systems 40 percent green coverage in the campus be maintained by 2030 100 percent generated waste is segregated or recycled within the campus before disposal 75 percent movement by bicycle or electrical vehicle within the campus and we are trying to promote sustainability through curriculum and encourage the students to pursue active research in promoting sustainability. We are looking five thematic areas, energy, water, waste management, natural ecosystems, and sustainable buildings. 
these are the five areas how we can look the sustainability issues if we look the energy the first uh, figure actually talks about the annual electricity consumption at the university the second figure talks about the annual electricity bill which we are paying to the state electricity board for electricity consumption at the university and in the same time we also look the digital consumption because digital generator are used as a power backup if we look the numbers these numbers are relatively very very high it's not a very small numbers we are spending roughly 3.4 3.5 crores of rupees for the electricity bill and how we can reduce that electricity bill in one part and how we can reduce the grid electricity consumption in another part if we look 2020 data you leave 2019 we had a 53 into 10 to the power 5 unit of electricity consumption within the us and it's a big number with that aspect we have installed a 1000 kilowatt peak rooftop grid connected solar pv power plant under the government uh, scheme and tejpur university is the first academic institution to initiate the installation of the megawatt scale rooftop grid connected solar power plant in the entire northeastern regions of the country the electricity generated by the solar plant also helps in mitigating a substantial amount of the carbon dioxide emission to the environment because in case of a solar power plant we are not using any the electricity whatever we are generating that we are replacing the grid electricity and that much of grid electricity we are not consuming within the campus if we look the replacement of the grid electricity by the solar power plant in this last three years it is roughly 24.8 percent that means 24.8 percent of our electricity we are getting from the solar power plant and that amount of uh, carbon dioxide emission we are actually not emitting to the environment that is the mitigation of the carbon dioxide emission to the environment we are also trying to look the energy efficiency as one of the parameters where we try to look the lighting systems at this moment we have 34% total lightings are led based and if you look led and cfl lighting roughly 63% in a phased manner we will come we will make complete lighting systems is based on led the only issue because oh uh, why we are trying to do because leds are more energy efficient illumination systems compared to all other kind of illumination systems we are also trying to promote more and more bicycle use our target is 75% is the bicycle or electrical vehicle movement within the campus by 2030 at this moment our students roughly 45 or 46% of our students are using bicycles to commute from one place to another place we are also in bringing the new concept called pool cycle the school cycle is a kind of a cycle will be parked in the different locations and the visitors through students staff faculty they can use it and they don't have to pay anything so basically we are trying to promote to use more and more bicycle rather than motorcycle or car So, in case of the energy, we are trying 40% of our total electricity consumption from renewable energy-based systems. We are replacing all the old air conditioner with energy-efficient inverter-based technology with five-star rating because this is the new technology which is available in the market at this moment. Another important point that we want to set the temperature of all the air conditioner used in the office room, auditorium, conference hall in the range of 24 to 26 degrees centigrade. because most of the time you may also have a look that people fix the set temperature at 20 degree 22 degree and all those actually in earlier days this ac temperature set temperature of the ac was decided by the american standards but slowly we are also having our own studies where we are trying to look the tropical climate like india every location we don't need the 22 degree centigrade at the set temperature So 24 to 26 degree. What is the objective? Because if we raise the set temperature, our energy consumption in the air conditioner unit will be reduced. 
We are also trying to promote the movement by bicycle or electrical vehicle within the campus by 2030. In case of the waste management, our target is reduce, reuse, recycle and recover principles for different type of waste. At this moment, we have a food waste management uh, technology, thermocomposting and the bio waste management. The first few figures are the photographs. This is a 50 meter cube biogas plant, which is installed in one of the hostels, where they are using the kitchen waste as a feed material to produce the gases, which is methane, through anaerobic digestion. And this methane is used for the cooking at this hostel kitchen. Second figures, where we are trying to collect all the leaves due to from which is coming from the different trees and those are actually used for vermicomposting and we are getting the organic manure and that organic manure we are using for our own plant and the garden. The third point is a bio waste or bio incinerator where all the different type of bio waste, animal waste which are coming from the lab or the or health center including the sanitary napkins which can be actually uh, burned in this bio incinerator. We are trying to promote the conversion of waste to usable products or process by using available technological solution. We are not looking that you collect that waste and you dump it in other places. Here we are trying to bring how technology can be useful to convert the waste to some useful products. We are already in process with the plastics, which are actually coming or people are using or people are getting from different places in their homes or hostels. We we'll try to collect all those plastics from the individual houses and then we'll try to look how those plastics can be used in a recycled manner to form a useful products. To adopt holistic approach of waste management in the campus for achieving the goal for 100% sustainable management of waste. And we are trying, it's a zero waste campus by 2030. Because waste management becomes a big issue for every university or the institution. In case of the water, at this moment though, we don't have much problem with the water. Water level is very high. We are getting water because Brahmaputra is very nearby. But still, we are trying to look how rainwater harvesting can be useful for our places. The analysis tells the kind of rain we are generate, we are getting in this location is sufficient for our complete water requirement for the university. Our chemical science department they also come up with a low cost drinking water treatment for fluoride and arsenic, and this is a very well accepted technology throughout the country. We are also trying to reach out number of people, how this uh, plant or these systems can be installed. And then wastewater recycling to get a potable water which can be used for gardening and all this. In natural ecosystems, you will see in the later part that Tejpur University is a very good campus, greenery, a total 25,000 numbers of different plants are installed, uh, planted in different various sites within the campus in the last two decades. More than 55 varieties of birds, 72 varieties of butterflies are recorded from different habitats within the campus. If you look at a map from 2005 to 2020, and you can see the green areas are increasing. The green areas are increasing means the green coverage, tree and the serbs are increasing. And we are trying to protect 40% of our green coverage by 2030, because more and more buildings are coming up, but still we are trying to protect the green coverage. We will try to have a biological record of the campus, which will be available to the students and the local community to get involved within the university fraternity in biological recording and become a citizen scientist and campus shall be developed as a living laboratory for education and research, where not only our students will be involved, our outside our university students 
and general public will also be involved to understand and appreciate the conservation or the plantation activities. In case of the sustainable buildings, we are trying to make net zero electricity building or electricity neutral building. That means this building electricity consumption will be met by the renewable energy based systems generated electricity. At this moment, we have few buildings which are net zero electricity building or electricity neutral buildings like Department of Energy, Economic Buildings 2, Chemical Sciences, Student Activity Center, Library Building and Department of Environmental Science. Along with that, four hostels are also net zero electricity buildings. This actually promotes to understand that energy requirement of the buildings can be met by the renewable energy based systems. We will also try to have more net zero electricity buildings and also trying to load the green building design aspects in the new building constructions. Whatever the ideas of the way forwards are given in these five thematic areas, and these all the way forwards are, need, are measurable kind of activities. And all these way forwards will be either adopted within the university or it will have an outreach activity or it will have an academic programs or it will augment the R&D activities in the thematic areas. With this understanding what we can sum up that energy generation from the solar PV power plant actually reduces the electricity grid utility grid electricity consumption by 24.8%, whether the university has a target of 40% by 2030. So within the next nine years, we have to reach that 40% number. Consequently, electricity bill also reduces because we are producing the solar electricity or the electricity from the solar power plant, which actually reduces our electricity bill during this period, October 2018, when the plant was installed, until June 2021, roughly 125 lakhs. It's a big money for an university system. Thank 